How's it going? I was doing some cleanup in my shop the other day. I hate cleanup. I noticed just how many pen making tools and supplies that I actually have sitting around the shop that I've accumulated over the years. And it got me to thinking. That's dangerous. What are the basic tools that I need just to get started in turning a pen? That's what we're going to talk about today in this video. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I do a lot of wood turning focus videos here. If you're into that, subscribe. All right, time to talk about pen turning. To start out, I think it's a good idea to decide which type of pen you'd like to turn. Most turners start with a kit, and most kits are pretty basic. They come with a couple of brass tubes and some pen parts, and you can get them online or from a lot of different suppliers. I started out turning a slimline pen kit, and a lot of turners do that. They're inexpensive, and just in case you mess up, you can replace it. You'll notice that this isn't a slimline kit. In fact, it's not even a pen kit. It's a pencil kit. The principles are the same though, and it'll help us to see what tools we need to get started. When you get your kit, a good supplier is going to provide you with some instructions. I took all my instructions and put them in this old binder with some clear sheet protectors, and I have that kicking around the shop just in case I need it as a reference. When you look at your instructions, it's going to provide you with all the tools and supplies that you'll need to complete this project, as well as the bushings that you'll need, and it'll have a layout of all your parts. The first tool to consider is a wood lathe. I have an entire video on how to select a wood lathe. If you're interested in that, click on the card. Wood lathes come in a lot of different sizes, but the good news is you don't need something very large to produce pens if that's all you want to do. There are some really good deals out there if you want to go new or used. You can check Craigslist, Amazon, or even Harbor Freight. You can pick up something like this Wen lathe for under $200. A basic setup is going to include a wood lathe and a pen mandrel like this. This is a 7mm pen mandrel with some slimline bushings included and a brass nut on the end. You're also going to need some turning tools to make the wood round such as this spindle gouge. You can find some pretty good deals on some basic pen turning tools. Keep in mind that traditional tools you'll have to sharpen, whereas you can pay a lot more and get some carbide tools and you'll just have to replace the carbide cutter every once in a while. Let's go back to our instructions. This kit calls for a 3 quarter by 3 quarter by 5 inch pen blank. I just happen to have one right here made from ePay and you can cut these out yourself or order them. A great tool to have around the shop is a Sharpie marker. I use it for layout when I'm marking out my blank. If you have a small square, it's great for bringing layout lines all the way across the blank. The good thing about cutting your pen blanks is you can do it with just about anything because you can leave a little room on the ends that you'll be able to trim up later. When I'm cutting my blanks, I usually use my radial arm saw that I got for $30 at a yard sale. I don't know if you can find a deal that good though. You can also use a bandsaw or a table saw to cut your blanks. The beautiful thing is, is that even if you don't have a lot of money, you can always go pick up a hand saw and that'll get the job done as well. The next big tool to consider is a drill press. You can drill your pen blanks on the lathe, but it often requires extra tooling, and a bench top drill press is not too expensive. Your pen kit instructions are going to call for a drill bit to drill a hole in the center. This one's a 7mm, it's the size of your mandrel, and a good starter bit. Our kit calls for an 11mm bit. Just make sure to use the bit called for by your instructions. To drill my pen blanks, I use this self-centering pen blank vise. You don't have to have that though. You can always cut a couple of V's into some blocks and clamp them together with the pen blank in the middle. The idea is just to keep your fingers away from the drill bit. To mark the center on your pen blank, you might consider getting a straight edge and marking from corner to corner or getting a center finding tool. I find it's pretty easy on a small pen blank to find where the center is just by using my eye. Just a quick tip. You're supposed to rough up your brass tube so the glue will hold better. I mount mine between the bushings and hit it with some sandpaper while the lathe's running. 
There are several different ways you can glue your brass tubes inside your wood blanks. You can use super glue or cyanoacrylate. That's a good way if you want a fast setup time. For a stronger bond and a relatively fast setup time, you can use a 5 minute epoxy. For the strongest bond and the one I personally like to use, you can use Gorilla Glue or Sumo Glue, but polyurethane glues take the longest to cure before you can turn them. A tool that's really going to help you with your glue up is a pen tube insertion tool. It keeps a lot of the glue off of your fingers. You can buy these commercially with a tapered metal rod, but you have a wood lathe now so you can make your own. The original pen tube insertion tool is a sharpened pencil. If you've done it properly, there's a little bit of wood left on the outside that we need to trim away to get down to that brass tube and it needs to be 90 degrees to the inside so that our pen parts fit perfectly. What I like to use for this is an end mill or a barrel trimmer and these spin along the inside of your brass tube and that cutter head works to trim the end. And these you can buy in kits that have interchangeable sizes of shafts so that you can use it for different pen kits and they have different cutter heads that you can put on them. You can even buy these cutter heads in carbide so that they stay sharp longer. To use a barrel trimmer, it's really handy to have a vise or you could clamp it to a table if you'd like and you trim away the wood until you reach the brass that's underneath. Let's talk about pen mandrels for a moment. A pen mandrel is a 7mm rod that you can put some bushings on to hold your pen parts. And on one end it has a piece that fits into the Morse taper of your spindle on your lathe. It's best to know if you have a number 1 or number 2 Morse taper so that you order the right pen mandrel that fits your lathe. Your mandrel will come with a brass nut to tighten down your wood blanks onto the mandrel. And then you'll bring up the tailstock with a cone center and with some very light pressure so you don't bend the rod. Your instructions will also call for a set of pen bushings that will need to be ordered separately. There are many different bushings and different pen kits, so I like to organize mine in fishing tackle box holders, and I write on the bottom so I know where to put them back. You can set up your pen mandrel the traditional way, by tightening down the brass nut to hold everything in place, or you can purchase a specialized pen center that eliminates the need for the brass nut and it has a through hole so that you can put direct pressure directly on the bushings. And what this does is it makes it so you have less of a chance of bending your pen mandrel. I'd like to help you get an idea of the turning tools that you might like. So I'm going to turn this pen with traditional tools on the right and carbide tools on the left. And I'm going to speed up the video and hopefully that way you can get an idea of the process. It's sandpaper time. I like to buy premium sandpapers and I get them in various grits and I cut them up and put them in these bins so I know which grit they are. There are lots of different styles of sandpaper out there. The most important thing I think you can remember is to get a bunch of different grits so you can step your way up to a smooth finish. It's time to look at what type of finish we'd like to put on. I prefer a CA finish, which is basically layers of super glue. It's a very durable finish, but there's a little bit of a learning curve in knowing how to put it on. There really are a lot of finishes out there that you can try in your pens. You can do anything from an oil finish to a wax finish, uh, ready-made friction polishes. You can even try lacquers and polyurethanes. Really the sky's the limit and it depends on how you want your finished product to look. Now that you've got the pen polished the way you like, you need to assemble your parts. And there's many different ways you can do this, 
There's tools you can get to turn your lathe into a pen press. I've seen some resourceful wood turners make their own wood parts like these to press pens on the lathe. You can also use a vise or a clamp. Just make sure you don't use anything that's going to mar up the metal surfaces on your pen. If you're going to be doing any production, a pen press is where it's at. This one is the Milescraft brand and you can pick it up for about $45 or $50. One last helpful tool, just in case you need it, a pen disassembly kit for when you mess up, like I do, frequently. So glad you could hang out with me in the shop today. It was a pleasure. Pen turning was one of the first things I got into when I got my first wood lathe. I've enjoyed it immensely, and I know you will too. It was pretty cool making this project today. It's not a pen, but it's a pencil, and I'll put some stills at the end of the video so you can see what it looks like. If you have any more questions, put them in the comments section. If you want to see more videos like this, bump that subscribe button. Go out and do some good in the world today. We'll see you soon.